to just go ahead and jump into the story. And the first one I want to cover is uh, this story about this blind woman who was not born blind. So I'll play the TikTok and then I'll explain uh, the context that's not, that isn't in this TikTok because it's like about a minute um, in here. But there was it was like two parts that you can find it on YouTube. And everyone seems to acknowledge that this is pretty disturbing. But um, it sounds very similar to uh, situations that are very celebrated today. So so let's uh, watch. Have any regrets about taking your own vision or the process with which you, you did take your own vision? I don't have any regrets taking my vision. I believe I should have been born blind and I'm happy the way I am. I do have some regrets about <clears throat> the way I did it, but I'm ha in the end, I'm happy the way I am. Dr. Phil, I, with all due respect to Jewel, but I am having a really hard time, really hard time sitting so close to someone who traumatized herself, who damaged herself. We took an oath in medicine to help people. We see horrible tragedies every single day as doctors and people <clears throat> who would give anything to go back and restore their vision, their health. My heart is beating out of my chest. I can't even make sense of the emotions I'm feeling because to hear someone say, I've, o I've always felt I should be blind. Well, I've always felt I should be the Queen of England, but I'm not going out to become the Queen of England. So this woman, she said she believed, even from the time that she was six years old, that she should have been blind. There are people out there who, who are like transabled. They believe that they should have been born with some kind of disability. Okay. So she's one of those people and she believes that she should have been blind. So she ended up finding other people online who also believe that they should be blind, who live their lives as if they are blind. Now there's a difference in obviously being able to see and being blind. Uh, you don't know what it's actually like to face that reality unless you actually are within that reality. As the doctors are saying, they know people who lose their vision and they would give anything to have it back. Um, and so that's why her experience is, is particularly disturbing to uh, some of these people watching, these professionals. Um, but she found a psychologist. She started to talk about how she actually wanted to be blind. And she found a psychologist who would actually help her become blind and like, well, if you're serious, like do the work, like research and stuff. So she starts researching on the best way to become blind and stuff. And, and, and so she gets like drain cleaner and the psychologist or whoever helps put, put it in her eyes and it eats through her eyeballs and, and permanently scars them and eats the corneas, etc. And so she goes to the, the doctors and she, one of her eyes, she has like a prosthetic and stuff. And, and the doctor is actually, sent her to like a doctor to look at her eyes and one of them was like yeah there's infection you're gonna probably need a replacement on the the prosthetic here and and he's just disturbed as well again because there's so many people who um wouldn't want to be in this situation and this person claims that they always wanted to be blind and actually hurt themselves to be blind okay so um the woman said the doc the doctor the medical professional responded very passionately was like, I may want to be the queen of England or may feel I'm the queen of England, but I'm not going to go out and try to make myself the queen of England. So I, my question <laughs> uh, is wh why isn't this same kind of energy given to a lot of people who feel a particular way about gender, that they are born in the wrong body? Again, this woman said that she felt this way since she was like six years old. And she saw she found other people who were like her. And she took matters into her own hands. So if you're um a male and you say that you were a girl, you can't possibly know that. That is you that is your assertion that you are assuming that you can even feel like a girl. <laughs> um, but but that that's what you believe. Um, it's it's not reality, but that's what you believe. 
and you seek out ways to meet a particular aesthetic. Perhaps you live your life at first as if you were a girl, and then you want to take matters into your own hand to try to make it a bit permanent. And you seek out a medical professional who will help you. And then you take drugs or whatever, and or, or uh, then you might start removing parts of your body that were healthy. Um, and if, in the case of a male, you might remove your junk. Um, if you're a female trying to transition, uh, you might get a hysterectomy. You might chop off your breasts, right? You might do a different kind of facial reconstruction, uh, et cetera, to try to meet that sort of reality. And you will scar yourself just like this woman decided to scar herself to achieve a goal of what she thought she was always meant to be. And that's what people do within the trans community as well. So why, why is it... <laughs> Why is it that we have such a strong response that what this woman did to herself, her healthy body, some people would say she wasn't healthy because her weight and stuff, but her eyes were fine, right? She damaged them and we find something particularly disturbing about that. But when it comes to Jazz Jennings or um, uh, different folks, we're like, oh, no. Cel celebrate that celebrate that people will say well no there's a very big difference between this woman here and and those different people who are trans you're correct there is a very big difference this woman is now actually blind she actually had an achievable goal she doesn't need people to pretend that she's blind. She is blind. She doesn't need to police people's speech in order to live out a fantasy of being blind. She is blind. She is blind. I don't, I don't need people who don't like TERFs to say we need to, like with, with the Hershey's uh, ad that came out, there was that one trans activist and people found different tweets of them saying we have to make TERFs life miserable to basically push them into silence. Dylan Mulvaney saying he thought it should be illegal to write that he was a he, him and stories over and over again in the media. Like the articles written about me using he pronouns and calling me a man over and over again. And I, I feel like that should be illegal. I, I don't know. That's, that's just bad journalism. Um, you don't, you don't have to do something like that with her. This woman is actually blind. She literally blind herself. She does not require society to play pretend with her. Of course, <laughs> what she did was cuckoo kachu. Of course, what she did was disturbing. And we all acknowledge that. I don't know. So some people out there might be like, you know, whatever. And you know what she said? It's her body. She said it's her choice. It's what she wanted to do. Um, she said her family would no longer speak to her um, because she did this thing to herself. And um, and so when the doctors were like, you know, viewing her, they're like, I, I hear regret. Like, do you have regret? And she's like, I, I regret not having my family in my life that they like left me. But she says she doesn't regret being blind. She doesn't regret being disabled. She doesn't regret harming herself. And yet we still feel like, I'm, I'm not saying there's not people out there who feel like, no, nah, it's her body. She should have totally been able to, to do it. And um, I don't know if people are pouring drain cleaner in their eye. I don't know how you, uh, besides getting them some medical help for their mind, I don't know how much you uh, really stop people from, from doing that, but you definitely shouldn't do it. We, we could start with uh, scolding is good. and But if we just applauded people and started giving her all sorts of adoration and praise for harming her eyes and treating her oh so special because she's blind. And, and we started seeing like a wave of other people doing the same thing. We, we would acknowledge that that's bad for society, I think, right? We would acknowledge it's kind of a bad thing. and something that we shouldn't like uplift. There are lots of people who did harmful things to themselves um, that, that wasn't good. 
but they did it to feel good about themselves or people who cut themselves to feel good about themselves. But there's, of course, all sorts of anguish and turmoil inside that they need to deal with. But they think that quick release of pain can help them in that moment. There are people who starve themselves or people who are bulimic. Um, and in Abigail Schreier's book, Irreversible Damage, she talks about those kinds of trends that girls would used to have. And, but, but nowadays <laughs> you see a lot of young women turning to the gender craze and they're so desperate to not be women. It's, it's really wild and really sad, but you can't tell me that what this woman did was so off the wall, but you, you cutting off your balls is so normal or, or acceptable to, ach to achieve a goal you can't achieve. And if, and if people won't accept you as yourself or how you think yourself should be, how you're presenting yourself, you get all mad. <laughs> You got William slash Leah Thomas who swam on the team and the girls, of course, were upset about that. I have an interview with uh, Riley Gaines. If you haven't seen that interview, you can watch it, but she's talked a lot about it. Obviously, since then, has stood up for other women, but but they they want in on the sports. They want in, in the prison systems. I told a story some time ago about a man who was supposed to be on death row in California, but you know, they, they're not too keen on that, especially people like Gavin Newsom and whatnot. So he got taken off death row. He was, he's in a women's prison and he killed his like infant children. You, you got murderers <laughs> and violent criminals who are going into women's prisons to be with the female population. And you can say, well, it's very dangerous for them in male populations. Prison is dangerous. I think that's part of the incentive of not doing crime and going to prison. I'm not saying people should be like assaulting and whatever in prison, but that's just kind of the reality of, of prison. But you think instead that, that the women who go to prison should be in particularly more danger with these violent criminals or, or you should get a pass as some kind of violent person to go in a woman's prison. They're sex segregated. There's no reason for you to be there. No reason for you to be there. No reason for you to be in a woman's sports either. Like if you want to live your life as a, as a woman the, to the best of your ability, then do that. But you, you just, this still doesn't mean you can be on a woman's sports team and, and no one should have to just pretend. <laughs> so again, there's a big, there's a big difference. <laughs> Between this woman here, who is who who said she felt like she was blind at six years old. That's what she said. She sought out other people, found other people like her, found a, a specialist or or a psych she said it was a psychologist or whatever who would help her if she was serious. She did the research and they found out a good way to blind her, and they blinded her. So she did this disturbing thing to her healthy body. But she she actually could achieve her goal. If you chop off your breast, that does not make you a man. And changing definitions or not being able to define words like what is a man and a woman doesn't really change the fact that you still are not a man or a woman. And it certainly won't change how people are supposed to respond to you or how we're entitled to respond to you. You still have to live with being an imposter. At least she's blind. At least she's blind. So if you found this story disturbing, why don't you find Jazz Jennings disturbing? Why don't you find other people who are chopping themselves up to pieces to appease how they think they're supposed to be disturbing because if you if you thought you were that way before without surgery and without drugs why do you need the surgery and the drugs if you felt affirmed as a woman or as a man without playing operation
some things to think about. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you go to blackteenews.com and check out different articles, different videos, and also check out our merchandise. If you like what I do, you can also support at the website on the donate page. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell. God bless.